wake up. The time is now to do what God is calling you to do. The time is now to stop sleeping on what is called what God has called you to do. There's so many things that come in the way. So many thoughts, so many obstacles that stop us from progressing forward into stepping into what God has been calling us to do all along. We have to wake up. Time is running short. I was reading the book of Haggai, both chapters, one and two. It's only two books. Go read it. And what I noticed about this, and I was like, God, I I know I've read this book, but I've just, it's speaking to me differently. Like I've never read it before. And one of the things that I noticed is that Haggai sent, was sent to give a word of the Lord to the people, the children of Israel, right? The Jews. And God wanted to know why they were not rebuilding the temple. He wanted to know why were they living in these lavish houses when his temple was lying in ruins? And then he asks, don't you wonder why things are not working out for you? Do you wonder why when you get money, it seems like it's falling through your pockets? Like you got holes in your pockets? Are you wondering why when you plant, uh, you're not even reaping good fruit? And whatever you harvest blows away in the wind before you can even get to the house. How you eat, but you're never satisfied. These are the things that the Lord asked. The time is now. See, they thought that the time had not yet come because there was opposition that stood in the way when they first started to rebuild the temple. But see, God had made provision. He was letting them know. The time is now to do what I called you to do. What about my house? What about the kingdom of God? You're so busy worried about you, your things, your house, what is going to benefit you, that you are not willing to do what God has called you to do because you don't think that you are equipped to do the thing. You don't think that you're prepared to do the thing. You don't think that you have enough experience to do the thing. Well, I'm here to tell you that that is a lie. I'm here to tell you that God doesn't need you to have all the experience, all the accolades, all the degrees, the side, all of the different things. He don't need you to have all of that in order for him to move through you. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit will give you the words to say in the time that you need to say it. The Bible even talks about how he used the young. Don't say that you're too young to do the word of the, to do the works of the Lord. You're not too young. You're not too old. You're not too lost. You're not too far gone. Your sin is not too great for you to turn to the Lord and allow him to partner with you. This is about the kingdom. You have been called. You have been chosen. The time is to stop sitting on your hands. And start moving. Getting into the position to hear from God. To hear what he has to say to you. The time is now. You don't need to sign up for another course. You don't need to sign up for another coaching program. You don't need to ask. You don't, you don't need all of that. And if you do need it, God will lead you to the right one. And you will feel peace about it. You won't be straining and charging up credit cards in order to attain something that you're insecure about. Don't allow your insecurities and your fears to hold you back into stepping into the calling. Into the plan that God has laid for you to walk through. He is leading and guiding you. God needs your yes. God needs your obedience. He doesn't need anything else from you. When you look at everybody in the Bible pretty much, or I can name quite a few people, we'll say Moses. He thought he wasn't equipped to go and, and talk to Pharaoh to let the people go. 
He said he got a speech impediment. God wasn't hearing that excuse. All right. Go anyways. He provided what he what he asked for because he didn't need Aaron. He could have did whatever God told him to do without Aaron. But he still was stuck in his insecurities that God said, you know what? All right. Aaron will be a mouthpiece for you. Tell him what to say. We have to get to a point where we get into position to allow God to do what he wants to do through us without our resistance. If you understood the dynamics of the plan that God really has for us, it will probably blow your mind. And you may even become overwhelmed. That's why we only know certain things. Like God doesn't feed us the entire plan. Sometimes it's going to take us to take that first step and continue stepping out. Because we can't handle all of that. One of the things that I want to take note of as well in the book of Haggai is once they heard the word of the Lord, it didn't take them that long to begin reworking on that temple. And God saw that their obedience was in exercise. And so you know what God did? He gave them enthusiasm. He gave them enthusiasm. <laughs> he gave them the excitement. To carry on the work. They were into it. Don't despise the small beginnings. For the Lord rejoices when he sees the work begin. So I just want to encourage you today. That if you feel ill-equipped. If you feel like you don't have what it takes. If you feel like um, you can't do whatever this thing is that God has said to do. It don't even have to be whatever that is to you. Like, I want to encourage you. You have what it takes. Stop downplaying yourself. And start relying on God to give you what it is that you need to do what he's called you to do. He always provides. Always. I'm going to tell you really quickly and hey, God. As soon as they started rebuilding that temple again, some of the neighbors came over and they was like, who told you you could do that? They went to the king and they told on him, basically. And they was like, yeah, the, Israel, like, the Israelites, they usually, they, they cause a lot of problems. Like, they, they rebellious and all this different kind of stuff. And so that king, he called them and was like, all right, who, who told y'all? And they let him know who did. He said, well, King Cyrus. First of all, God told us. Second of all, King Cyrus issued a decree. And you can go and find it. Allowing us to rebuild the temple when we were released from exile. Well, that king, King Darius, he went and found the lost scroll. And he saw that King Cyrus had already given them approval. He released them and then he gave them access to rebuild the temple and all of the supplies that was needed to rebuild it. And so the very people that tried to stop them again, King Darius told them to go and give them what they need to rebuild that temple. As a matter of fact, go help them. You see, God already had made a plan before they could even ask God for what? for a plan all the way back with king cyrus he quickened his spirit <laughs> he ain't even a jew he wasn't even one of god's people but god used him for such a time as this he already knew what was going to happen all of those years later that he put he made king cyrus write that decree so that later it wouldn't be no issue for that temple to be rebuilt. And so, yes. 
Rise up, daughter. Rise up, son. It's time. Stop sleeping. This is crucial. Okay? All right, real quick. I have a book that is releasing on the 24th. Pre-orders are open now. The book is called Her Voice. And I want to encourage anyone who is dealing with heartbreak, who is dealing with betrayal. I want to encourage anyone to get this book. If it's not for yourself, but you know somebody that's going through some stuff, get that book for them. Christmas is coming up. I wrote this book and the enemy has been trying to get me to stop <laughs> the process. <laughs> but I said no. I'll leave a link in the comments. If you have a prayer request, there is a link in the comments. If you have a question, there is a link in the comments. Leave them there. All right, y'all. Be blessed.